What's up, everybody? This is Neil Real, and this is Let's Please God, the ministry that helps you stay right with God and find victory over sin and the devil. Today, we're talking about parenting once again. Now, this time, 10 things that stops parents from being good parents. Last time, we discussed the 10 duties of a parent, and today we'll be talking about what stops them from being good parents. So we're in a series called Sex and Family, and one of the important things to have a successful society and a culture is to have good parents who produce good children, which lead to good people to marry each other and to have good families and to re repeat the process. And so this is why we're talking about parenting. So let's get right into it. The 10 things that stops parents from being good parents. Number one, some parents have the idea that parenting stops at providing a child's physical needs. So I've heard this from men. They'll say stuff like, I feed you, I clothe you, I shelter you, I protect you from harm, I've done my job. And what they fail to do is they, they fail to nurture their child. So, so the solution to this is to not just stop at the physical needs of a child. Because essentially what you're doing is just you're just making sure the child grows older. And usually what they'll do is they'll get to a certain age early 20s, mid 20s or so, and then they just kick the kid out and say, well, you're old enough to live in life now, as if the child was prepared. So this is the problem. You have to nurture your child. But this is a mindset that some people have, that all they have to do is raise the child up, make sure they get to a certain age, and then you kick them out the house. No, you got to nurture them. You got to make them your, them your apprentice. You got to make them a student. You know, you got to impart to them wisdom so that they are prepared and equipped to handle life and be successful. All right. So that's what the solution is for this. You can't think that way. You got to do more. And if you can't get a mentor, get somebody to uh, help in educating your child. All right. So that's the first uh, thing that stops a parent from being a good parent. The second thing that stops a parent from being a good parent is this idea that a child must come to the parent to learn is more of an excuse to not be a full parent. So they'll say stuff like, you know, my child should ask me questions if they want to know something. But the answer to that is that children don't know the questions to ask. OK, now this could be a, this could be legitimate if you taught your child so much. They're of a certain age. They say that they're in their mid 20s and it's now up to them to come back to you to ask for questions because out of humility and um, not knowing they should, they should come to their parents and ask questions. But to say that a child is supposed to have common sense, to say that a child is supposed to know things without them being educated by their parents is just false. Children have to be programmed. They have to be educated. Okay. And the parent must impart. And so a child doesn't know the questions to ask. They need to be engaged. So the solution to this problem here is to engage your child at a young age, get them comfortable talking to you and you, you know, engaging them about their day and don't overreact when they tell you something about their life. And as you impart wisdom into their life, they'll begin to ask you questions and they'll begin to get information because they want to know because now they have, they know, they know what to ask now because they have information. They have a base of understanding of the world. So that's the solution for that. But that's what makes it bad parent. If you, if you just think that you know, your kid's supposed to come to you about stuff, they don't. They don't know anything. They just don't know anything. It's not that they don't have a brain. They don't have any basis of information to go off of to ask questions on. They have no clue about the world unless you tell them. And if you don't tell them anything, they're going to get it from the world. They're going to get it from school. They're going to get it from other people. They're going to get it from media. And it may not be good for them. The number three thing that stops parents from being good parents is bad religious beliefs. So here's a few of them. As I've talked about in the past in my series on sex and family, uh, sexual oppression came from the Catholic church. I told them you couldn't masturbate. If you, if you do that, you're going to hell. Sex before marriage, you're going to hell. Any other sexual position, um, sexuality as a whole, the desire to have sex with somebody you're not married to is a sin sexuality in, in a whole is just bad you know now if you believe that as a parent and you teach your kid that they're going to have problems with their sexuality growing up okay they're going to be sexually oppressed that means they're not going to be able to enjoy sex with their their spouse okay 
and it, and, and it also will kill on some level their ability to even attract a mate because people are going to realize that something's wrong with them on a sexual level. That's a function of a human being and that's suppressed. So that's a, an example of an erroneous religious belief. Okay. So it's important as a, a parent to assess your religious beliefs before having a child. Another bad belief that people teach their children or they have about themselves and is that if you're not in the church, you're going to hell. You don't have a covering. Or this other idea that you should have faith in faith. So believing in something that you want, even if it's not based off of anything that God said. You know, we talked about having faith in faith, you know. But this stuff comes from religion. And if, if this is not benefiting your life and you have children, you're, you're most likely going to pass those ideas over to your children. And that's going to lead you to be a bad parent because you're, you're handicapping your child or you're suppressing your child's sexuality or you're getting them to believe something that's not helpful to them in life. All right. So the solution is, is this. What you want to do if you are a part of, a, of religion is to tell your child this. You're free to question the religion that we're a part of. While you're under my house, you're going to follow my rules with this religion, though. If you say you're a Christian, they got to go to church with you. They got to do Bible study, et cetera, et cetera, as long as they're in the household. But give them the freedom to question it and say, at some point, you don't have to follow this. You don't have to be a part of this. You can do your own religion. So let them know that. And the, but let them know that they're free to think and to question what they're learning and what they're hearing. Now, some of you may say, well, they, they, my, my kid won't be a Christian. It's not your job to make them a Christian. It's your job to raise them up in the ways of God. They're going to make the decision whether you like it or not, what they want to do with um, God or not. You just make sure you give them a strong foundation on Christ. They're still going to make their decision later on in life anyway. But I've seen this many times. Kids or children, they'll be raised Catholic. And because Catholicism was so oppressive or if they were raised in Protestant Christianity, it was so hypocritical that they rejected the entire religion. They rejected God. They rejected the Bible, too, all because of their upbringing, you know, and, uh, and a lot of times it screwed them up. It bothered them. So the solution is that is to give your child the space to think for themselves when it comes to questioning some things in, the, in, in their religion. OK, they have the right to do that. They still got to su submit to your rules in the house. They still got to go to church if you have Bible study, but they have the right to question that. And they have the right to, at some point, when they get of age, to leave that they don't have to be a Christian or a Muslim or whatever religion that they're part of. OK, don't be on them as if this is the way you should more so be better at showing your works rather than trying to tell them they have to be a Christian. They have to be a Muslim or whatever it is that you want to push on them. Because it's better shown by works. Is my is mom or dad fruitful because of their God? If so, I'll probably serve that God. If, if mom and dad is not fruitful because of the God that they so-called serve, then I'm probably not going to serve that God. But at least if that's who they serve, at least give the child room to think for themselves and say, you're free to not follow this you know, religion at some point. You're, you're, you're free to question what you learn in this religion. All right. Number four, the number four reason what stops parents from being good parents is that they didn't want children in the first place. Sometimes it's just an accident. Both parents didn't want to have children. It's kind of broke. The pill didn't work. Somebody was off the pill. Maybe one parent wanted to have a child. The other didn't. The girl wanted to get the man. She wanted to get pregnant so she can keep the man in a relationship. This stuff happens all the time. Or it's simply the man wants to please his wife, but he doesn't want to have children himself. And I've heard this um, spoken to by, by one parent. It was, a, it was the father. And he was telling his two sons, he said, I, I didn't want children. Your mother wanted children. And that's what he told them. And later on in life, we could see how that decision was reflected because he showed some lack of care. He, he didn't want to engage them. He didn't want to nurture. Them. Anytime they came to him about learning how to be men or how to do this or that, he would push them away. He would come off in a way that was just, I don't want to talk to you, leave me alone. But he, of course, he would say, I, I feed and clothe and shelter you. But it came from not wanting to have children. So if you are a parent that doesn't want to have children, you should not have children. No matter if one half of the relationship does want to have children. Okay. 
So men need to stop bowing to their wives what they want. And this comes from gynocentric social order and men just um, giving women what they want, even though they don't want to do it. And, and the outcome is children that men don't want. And then they neglect the children. They, they teach the children in a way that shows that they're not that loved or they're not appreciated or they're not valued. So here's the solution to that. First of all, don't feel ashamed for not wanting children. I think a lot of people are told that they should have children, especially in the Christian community, that you need to be fruitful and become many, okay? That's just one reason why you should get married. But if, that's, if you're not interested in children, then you don't, you don't need to have any, okay? Especially if you don't want them, you really shouldn't have children. You just shouldn't have them, okay? So be honest about not wanting children early on in a relationship. Don't compromise as men. If your woman wants to have children and she's, that's what she wants to do, then say, well, we can't be married and I'm not going to pursue a relationship with you because you want children. Or you change your mind later on in life and you get married and you decide you don't want to have children, but your wife still does. Just be upfront. I'm not having children with you. I'm not going to have children. She may cry about it because she can't fulfill one of her roles as being a mother, but look, it's better for those children not to be born than to be born to a, a household where one parent does not want. Another thing, the solution here is to uh, give the children up for adoption. So if you are pregnant and you do not want children, or this is not something you plan, give the children up for adoption so that they are raised by a loving family who actually likes them and wants them, all right? And once again, I want people to understand that don't be ashamed if you don't want children. If you don't want your child, if you had sex and your child came out as an accident, you had you made a mistake. The fifth thing you can do here as a solution to this problem with not wanting children is, to, is if you have a child already, find a mentor to take care of that child, to subsidize what you are not willing to do for that child. And back to the adoption thing. I think it's important to, if you, if you do give your child up for adoption, to give a note to the adopting parents for the child to read at a certain age so that they don't feel like they weren't wanted necessarily. It's more so because children tend to take things personally um, when it's really about you. You didn't want them. It wasn't like they were a bad person or anything, that, that something was wrong with them. But that's how children take adoption sometimes. Well, well my mama didn't want me. Well, my daddy didn't want me. You know, it's not, they just couldn't take care of you. They didn't have the finances or resources. Maybe they weren't in good health. Maybe they just didn't want you. It's not to say it's not something against you as a person, little Johnny or whatever their, their, their name is, you know? So that should be something that you should probably write and just say, look, this is what happened, you know? And it was better and I love you enough to put you in the hands of somebody who actually is gonna care for you and nurture you and bring you up as a strong human being. See, so there's where you can add in how much you love them by putting them with somebody else who actually gonna take care of them. So number five, the number five reason what causes parents to be bad parents is being overworked and stressed. So some cultures are designed to enslave people and which leads to them neglecting their children. So enslavement, meaning they got a job that just causes them to work all these hours. They, they get very little pay. And it's kind of a trap, you know, they, they make just enough to come back to the job and it's not a good deal. And what happens is the, the parent comes home tired or both parents are working and, and they have to leave the child in daycare or something like that. And they're never there to really nurture the child. Of course, they're bringing in money. So the child is financially taken care of. They got the food, clothing and shelter, but the child is not nurtured. They're not being brought up in the things of the Lord. They are not being given wisdom. They're not a student. They're not an apprentice. They're just pretty much raising themselves. Media is raising them, television, the internet, people at school, the world, everybody else but the parent, okay? And so this is a problem. So the solution here is to make sure at least one parent is at home to raise the child. So when you have a child, make sure there's, the, the wife usually is at the one at home. There's somebody there to raise that child and nurture that child and impart to them wisdom. And as a man, you can give your wife wisdom that will be imparted into your child through the mother, through the wife. So that's one thing. Another thing is to get rid of a stressful, low paying job. Okay. Downgrade if you have to, but make sure you have time to nurture your child aside from just giving them the basics. 
You got to nurture them. You got to raise them. And like I said, these jobs will make you just feel selfish because you get home. It's like, OK, I just need me time. I need to rest. I don't want to talk to my kid about their day. And I'm not trying to see what's going on with them because I'm too busy working. So you can't let work cause you to neglect your children. Once again, if you can't nurture them, you don't have the time for it. Get a mentor to take care of them. So you're working so hard. OK, you can't drop. You just can't drop your job just right just right find a mentor program big brothers big sisters something like that where the child can interface with somebody who is who is nurturing them and giving them wisdom for life okay number six here this is another reason or what causes parents to be bad parents and this is a dysfunctional upbringing so the parent as a parent you had a dysfunctional upbringing but you got no healing or therapy for it so here you are growing up in an abusive environment there was alcohol, there was neglect, uh, you had a dominating parent, there was dishonesty, narcissistic behavior, all this stuff going on. And you grew up in this, but you never went to therapy and talked to anybody, anybody about it. You never spoke about how you were damaged and, then, and you never got healed. Well, if you don't get healed, if you don't go to therapy and, or if you don't talk to Christ and, and get all these things situated, you're going to be a bad parent because you're going to pass that dysfunction on to your child. OK, so it's important that if you know you had a, a messed up upbringing, that you sit down and talk with somebody, somebody who is competent enough to help you overcome these issues. Talk to your pastor, get um, counseling, talk to Jesus about these things. OK, get healed and get your, your life and your mind situated so that you don't harm your children. If you reproduce children, you're going to do the same thing that they did, that your parents did to you. And it may be in different areas. Well, you will say, I'll never be a drunkard. I'll never be beaten, beaten my, my spouse. So I'm not going to be abusive, et cetera. But there'll be another area that you're failing in because you did not sit down with a therapist or somebody and talk about your issues and get healed so that you can have your mind right. A lot of people are just not doing that stuff. And if you don't have the ability to talk to somebody, you don't have the finances. What you can do, you're going to have to do a lot of self-help, read a lot of books on these issues, listen to a lot of psychiatrists, try to, to, to get healing. But your point is, is that you recognize that you are messed up in some areas of your life and that you need help. That's the issue here. A person that does not think that they have any issues or think that that somehow because they're out of an abusive household or relationship, that somehow they're OK now because they're away from it. No, it did damage to you. It altered you in some way. OK, and your issues are going to end up affecting your child. So the solution is to, is to fix that. Another thing that stops parents from being good parents is the lack of both parents. So it's important that children have both parents. A child needs both feminine and masculine energy. And most importantly, they need that masculine energy. They need that father. OK, it's been so many studies that show that when a person, a child grows up without a father, they're screwed up. They're dysfunctional. All right. So if you are a parent and you're raising your child on your own, you're going to end up being a bad parent. And you're saying, well, no, I'm doing my best. Well, you need the other side of it. OK, we said, well, I can't get married right now. Blah, blah, blah. I'm not saying that. But the solution here is this. Get a mentor. Get somebody to sub parent your child with you. They are the opposite sex. OK, so if, if you are a man, try to get a, 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 a woman to help you. Big brother, big sister mentor program where a female can come in and interact with your children. And especially if you're a single mother, get, get a mentor, find an uncle, find some man with some masculine energy to bring in there to help those children be raised. Because women cannot raise children, particularly males. They will mess them up. OK, they're going to mess them up. If you're, a, if you're a female, you're a single mother listening to this. I don't care what you say to me. All the studies show that when a boy is raised by a mother with no father. He is messed up. He grows up messed up. So you got to get help. They need both men and women. OK, and if it's not, you know, some mentor, it, it can just be some uncle, some other family member that can come in and help in that area. They just need the masculine and the feminine side of the energy so that they can can help the child grow up. Another thing that causes parents to be bad parents is number eight here is bitter never married or divorced parents so there's been a split and there's children involved and in some cases because of bitterness between the spouses one parent is talking really bad about the other parent 
and the children is hearing this. And in some cases, the parent is talking directly to the child about their, their mother or father. And that's causing issues with that child and how they think about the opposite gender in some cases or their, their own gender in some cases. And once again, going back to single mothers, I'm mean, not trying to pick on them, but they tend to, uh, in some cases, downgrade the father to where the boy either grows up um, trying not to be his father and, and eliminate a lot of good qualities that the father did have. He looks at men in general as something like they're toxic. So a lot of women are feeding that to their children, particularly their male, their, their sons, that, you know, masculinity is toxic. We have girls growing up looking at a mother who was raised, you know, who raised them by herself. And she sees nothing but masculinity, you know, but back to um, the, the bitter parents in the, in the custody battles and stuff. The solution to this is this. As a parent, you have to commit to yourselves that you're not going to talk bad about each other to your children, not in their presence. And definitely not when they're away, because sometimes the child may be in another room, but they think they can talk bad about the parent on the phone to some some other some coworker or friend. The child's still going to hear that. So it's, it's important that you keep that away from your children. Speak positive of your ex-husband or your ex-wife. Speak positive so that they don't grow up with some weird, perverted idea about the opposite gender or their own gender. So the ninth thing that causes parents to be bad parents is when one good parent tolerates a bad parent. So you got some narcissism going on, some abuse going on, and one spouse is, is taking, allowing that to happen. What that's doing to the child is it's showing the child that they can tolerate abuse. They should tolerate abuse. It's showing that the child that they should be weak. It's telling the child that they can abuse somebody and that they should expect the person to take it, all right? So it's important that parents check the other parent for acting out, especially if you are ahead, you as a man in the house and your wife is acting up. It's important as men to get control of your household. We talked about ruling over your, over your wives and making sure they're not out of order and all this kind of stuff and vice versa. Ladies, if you're with a man who's abusive, get out of that relationship. Make it a, a point to say, look, I'm not going to take this physical and emotional abuse. I'm leaving this relationship or I'm going to separate. And you state that this is why mom and dad are separate. OK, and you're showing strength by doing that. You're saying, look, I'm not going to tolerate this, this stuff. I'm a healthy individual and I'm not going to put up with this. All right. It shows that you have self-respect and self-worth. And that's what you want to show to your kids so that anytime they get up in a situation where they see this kind of abuse going on, they're going to say, well, no, nah, I got to get out of this. I'm not taking this. You see, but when parents stay in relationships like that, it causes their children to grow up. And that's the way that they are being bad parents because they're modeling a lack of self-worth and, and, and saying that it's OK to be abused and stuff like that. All right. So the solution is to get out of that stuff. Divorce if you have to separate if you have to, but make a statement. This is this is not right. I'm not going to accept. All right. Number 10. And this is the 10th thing causes parents to be bad parents. And that's just a basic lack of love. If you know that you're a bad person, like most people do, if you practice narcissism, if you are, are selfish or you're impatient, you're envious, you're controlling, you're dishonest, you're going to pass it on to your children. You're not going to be a good parent. And I see this. Actually, people, a lot of people really don't know this. They don't think about it. You know, you're going to keep create a copy of yourself. If you're a bad person, you're going to create a bad child. You're going to be a bad parent. They're going to be like you and probably worse, okay? So it's important to repent of your sins, confess your sins, go to God and say, Lord, forgive me for my sins, go to therapy, talk about how you can rearrange your mind so that it operates properly from all the you know, abuse and sin you've been practicing. I've heard people say, I'm having a child so, that, so the child can love me. This is extremely selfish and it puts all the burden on this child to love that parent. Children are not brought into this world so that they can love their, their parents. They're brought into this world to be a, an extension of the parent, to be a copy, to extend the, the human race, to, to bring about a better generation. And for the parent to put the weight of loving the parent on them is just totally selfish. And, and quite frankly, the, the child does not know how to love. They, they, they have to be taught that. 
And I can see, you know, and I've heard this from parents say this. They say, you know, I'm going to teach them how to love me and they're going to love me. And this is, this is, and I usually hear this from women. They want this baby to love them and be all into them and be all about them. But what about that child's life? What about what they want to do? What, the, what about what they're going to be in life? You know, so that's selfishness. And that type of treatment or that type of mindset is a lack of love. And what happens is you're a bad parent. You become a bad parent. You're going to raise a bad child. They're probably not going to love you because they're going to realize my mama was selfish. My dad was selfish. And so I'm not and I'm not going to I don't like them. I'm not going to take care of them when they're older because they were selfish, you know. So it's important to be a, a healthy person. Get therapy. Once again, repent of your sins, get therapy, get a mentor to subsidize your parenting if you can't do it full time. So that's the 10 things that, that stops parents from being good parents and the solutions to fix them. I hope this was helpful to somebody. Next, we'll be talking about what the word of God says about parenting. And once again, like this whole series and, and specifically these two, these last two talks, this talk and the last talk about parenting. I get this stuff from psychology. I read psychology papers. You know, you formulate a lot of stuff and you say, OK, this is why a parent needs to be this and a parent needs to be that. And you'll see that the, the word of God will support a lot of what I've been talking about in these last two talks about parenting when we jump into that last part of this series on parenting. So until next time, say subscribe, walk in the spirit and be blessed.